What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the spot. We kick back and react to all kinds of different things. All right, so what we got going on today? We're about to check out Kyle Hill. Yeah, it's been a long time since we checked out his channel. You're talking about nuclear uh, uh, equipment and science and stuff like that. Um, but I decided to do this one to just put this one out. Cats are the worst invasive species? Question mark. Interesting video. I saw it and I was like, you know what? I got to do it. I got to go ahead and do it. So here we are back on Kyle Hill's channel. We're definitely going to check out more stuff. I know you guys um, from when I was doing his um, videos on the old, uh, on the main channel before it became a music channel, completely music channel. Um, I know there was plenty of other like science and uh, nuclear related videos that you guys wanted me to check out. So we will be going back. I know he's got a lot of content, a lot of stuff to react to. So we'll be taking a, a big journey through all the work he's been doing. But for now, let's get into this because I'm a huge cat lover myself. So I want to see what he has to say about cats being an invasive species. Um, they definitely are to a lot of creatures. That's why they want you to keep your um, house cats indoors and stuff. That's why they even label them house cats because what is a house animal? They all come, you know, even everything comes from the wild, even us, <laughs> you know? So um, we've labeled them like house pets simply because we don't want them destroying the surrounding ecosystem. Uh, can't even talk. The surrounding ecosystem, <laughs> you know? Um, so let's see what he has to say about this. It's 14 minutes. I'm pretty sure he has more than what I just said to pretty much lay out. I love cats. This is not going to change my opinion about them. The only reason I don't own one now is because I don't have the time to really nurture or take care of one. Because I feel like if you have a pet, you just don't have a pet that hangs around. You got to you gotta spend time with them. Got to give them some love and stuff like that. And you got to do things with them and nurture them. And because I like taking pets as like babies and really raising them up. At least that's what I used to do when I was like a kid and everything and a teenager. Now, I don't have the time to do it, so I don't. And that's the only reason I don't have a cat right now. So, let's check this out. Let's see how bad of this bashing these cats are going to get. Let's go. <laughs> cats have been our cute, clawed companions for literally thousands of years. They are furry friends that purr, play, and murder. <laughs> cats may be cute. <laughs> yes, and murder. They are exceptional hunters. But they are also walking ecological disasters. So much so that, given the evidence that we have, there's an argument to be made that no cat should ever go outside. Yes, I'm talking about you, you little monster. <laughs> exactly. Like, the, you just laid it out right there why we call them house pets and why we call them house cats. It's not that that's where they technically belong. Wild animals, just like anyone else and anything else. It's just that they are dangerous to the environment. <laughs> now entering the facility. Obviously, cats are cute to us, but to small mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, little kitties may as well look like the Grim Reaper, a extinction-causing, disease-spreading, ecologically damaging Grim Reaper. And I know if you're a cat lover like me, these claims you may have not heard before, and they sound like they have some claws. <laughs> well, I've heard all the claims before. <laughs> I know which ones are legit and which ones are not. <laughs> yeah, so today, let's go through these claims and the data to support them. But first, how did we get here with cats? Lady, how did you get here? Oh, come on, you know you're not allowed in here. And you're definitely not allowed outside. I was just talking about how you're not allowed outside and that everything should be... We're just hanging... What's that? Yeah, no. I don't know. A couple hundred thousand people? Yeah. What? Yeah, you're going to be famous. What's that? No. I can't burn all of my brother's possessions. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, lady. I didn't expect you to hang out in my arms for this long... When, when I, I picked, picked you up initially, initially while I was coming here to tell the facility people about science stuff, I, I really imagined that you were just going to um, immediately, just immediately, just immediately, just Im okay, 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 all right, please. <laughs> That's so real. They want what they want. You never know. 
You can pick up a cat and think that they're going to run. The next day, they're like, nah, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable today. I'm just going to chill here. The other days, you think you're going to get all kinds of affection? Leave me alone. I don't feel like it. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> hey. oh, oh, Aria, could you, could you, could you tee, tee up, up the, the new, new guy? guy? I think... Uh oh, I, I think, think ladies heading, heading for the blast, blast doors. doors. Get, get the, the new guy. guy! All right, new kid, you're up. Thanks, Aria. I'm pretty nervous, if I'm being honest, but should be fine, right? I mean, two million subscribers is a perfectly normal amount of people to talk in front of. Yep, okay, here we go. There isn't an abundance of definitive science to prove exactly when humanity started to domesticate the cat, but a lot of the leading theories seem to agree that it was around 10,000 years ago in or near the Fertile Crescent. Since then, countless societies have kept cats as companions or pets since the, the days of yore. <laughs> Is days of yore too much flavor? Am I blowing this? According to an article from Scientific American. You got this, bro. You got this. A team of researchers from the National Museum of Natural History in Paris found a gravesite in the island of Cyprus that they dated to be about 9,500 years old. Right next to the grave of the person that was buried there, just 40 centimeters away, there was a much tinier grave for a little eight-month-old cat. So that's cute. But also deeply sad. But our tale of... Well, think about it from back then. It's not like they had that much to do or that much entertainment and stuff. And you don't know his relationship with his cat. Could have loved that cat. Loved it so much. Want to be buried with it. It's weird to some, cute to others, <laughs> wholesome in a way. Don't judge. <laughs> it just goes to show how much that we've, how much we've always loved cats, really. That's all. How feral and outdoor cats became so troublesome also begins in the Fertile Crescent. According to that same article from Siam, when humanity started to domesticate these wild cats, they sort of just let the cats still fend for themselves out in the wild never really providing all of the food the cat needed. And in the thousands of years of domesticating cats up until now, we sort of done the same thing. All of the outdoor cats can basically just fend for themselves out there, finding food and water on their own. As a result of this, the wild cats and the cats of today have never evolved past the need for their predatory instincts. We've never stripped them of that animalistic hunting sense, which has kind of led us into the predicament we're in today. Oh God, oh God, it's happening. Oh. But there's also a reason, another reason for that, that they're probably going to get into here. That I'm just, I'm throwing it out there to see if I'm right. <laughs> we, we appreciate them as hunters. The fact that they get rid of vermin, the fact that they kill small creatures, it may be bad for, you know, outside in the ecosystem, but it's very, very good and very, very useful for your home. Any bugs, any mice, any critters and everything, you know, and you see examples of when people like over pamper their cats, how they're incapable of hunting and how they run away from little critters when they see them. And then you see people who have cats who are either used to going outside or at the very least their owners played with them and get, allowed them to develop their hunting instincts and everything. Man, kill everything around there. There's not a single critter, not a single mouse, not a single piece of vermin anywhere. They take care of that. <laughs> I even have a recent story about that. <laughs> we had a mouse. We had, a, we had mice in our house. I don't know where they came from. Could have been like a neighbor or something who had mice or whatever. But all, all of a sudden, we had been living here for years. And all of a sudden, we had mice. And we were getting rid of them, putting down traps. It was a battle for a minute. But then one day, there's a cat that's under our house. I had to like remove a vent so he can get out. And after that cat, after that random stray cat, and it just took off running. It just took off running. I think I gave it some tuna, ate the tuna, and then went about its way. And, um, but after that, we never saw another mouse again. That cat just stopped by and just took, randomly took care of our mouse problem. So that's just how valuable they are as hunters. And that's, I think that's a big reason why we never took the time, like we've done with dogs, to strip them of their natural hunting instincts. Okay, I got to speed this up. Um, cats finally arrived in the Americas between the 15th and 17th centuries on board colonizer ships uh, because ship captains wanted to keep cats to deal with rodent stowaways. <laughs> as it... There you go. <laughs> Rodents is the main reason why we don't strip them of their hunting skills. Were uh, Alongside those cats that now rule all our major cities, those colonizers also brought terrible disease and the slave trade. So that's bad. <laughs> but I do love cats, though. Oh god, um, uh, it's happening. Uh, help, help, ah!
I like the researcher. He's good. Yeah, I like him too, Aria. Not nearly enough hair, but I'm working on that. <laughs> Genetic chemicals applied to the scalp. I know that some of you aren't going to believe me that these little cuties that we spent thousands of years with, living alongside with, are actually an unseen menace to ecology that we're not paying enough attention to. So let's go through the facts and figures of the cat apocalypse, the true scope and scale. Administrator, researcher Adef's cat has scratched his femoral artery. Dang it, Adef, I just had that whole room de-blooded. For totally normal reasons. <laughs> I'm taking those transfusions out of your next paycheck, pal. Cats, more specifically, feral or free-ranging cats, are routinely rated as among the worst invasive species on the planet, with ecological impacts so vast, honestly, if they weren't so cute and cuddly, Wait, what was we the... probably would have... Hold up, what was the... Say felines... Adis SPP? I don't know what that is. Someone let me know. I, <laughs> let me know. Because I was like, they are way up there in the damage cost and everything. Fast, honestly, if they weren't so cute and cuddly, we probably would have tried wiping them all out by now. There are reportedly at least 100 million cats in the United States alone. Up to half of those cats are unowned or feral. And a large portion of the owned cats are free-ranging, or outdoor cats. So most cats might be outside. Proponents of free-range cats will argue that their cute little kitties pose a negligible threat to other animals. However, according to the USDA, many studies have shown that cats are a major, if not the greatest, source of mortality to native birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. Mm -hmm. Cats kill literally billions of these small animals a year. More birds die to cats than hit buildings or cars or wind farms or electrical lines. As such, cats have contributed to the extinction of at least 63 species around mm. the world. Yes, cats have been used as pest control for the species we really do want them to hunt, but research indicates that cats are not effective in controlling invasive species populations. One analysis of 82 animal rehabilitation centers across North America found that cats were responsible for 52% of all injured birds, and 78% of those birds later died or had to be euthanized. Owners of free-ranging cats don't get a real sense of this carnage because studies show that cats only bring home about a quarter of their kills. Oh, and cats are also the most common vectors of rabies in domestic animals. Put simply, house cats are so good at what they evolved to do that ecosystems simply cannot handle an unnatural amount of them. It's like suddenly doubling the number of sharks in the ocean or tripling the number of polar bears in the Arctic. But this doesn't answer the question as to why cats in particular are so successful as an invasive species. Well, that's because cats share many characteristics with some of the worst invasives that we know of. No one knows how it started. Maybe a hurricane, maybe some disgruntled aquarium owners. But a few decades ago, lionfish, as few as just three genetics indicate, escaped into the waters around Florida. What happened next has been described by some scientists as a living oil spill. Lionfish may look like harmless flamboyants, but they are in fact voracious predators. They eat almost everything, all the time. So much so that they've been getting fat. Have you ever seen a fat fish? An obese fish? I haven't. Not only are they voracious, lionfish have no real predators in their new environment and are covered with venomous spines to boot. On top of all of this, they spawn like crazy. Females can produce tens of thousands of eggs every four days in the right conditions. Unsurprisingly, invasive lionfish are now a huge problem off the Florida coast, and it currently has no solution. Domestic cats actually have a lot in common with the lionfish. They don't have many natural predators in the areas we've brought them to, and we tend to protect them from the predators that they do have. They have short gestation times, and they produce large litters. They eat all manner of small animals. And like the lionfish, this has led to huge economic damage, ranging in the tens of billions. 
cats in the United States alone cost about the same amount of money each year that NASA does. Mm. Now think about that for a second. Am I saying that cats are literally keeping us from going to space? No. No, because if you know how much NASA's getting, you'd realize that while their budget is, it does look huge looking at it by itself, they have one of the smallest budgets in all sections of the government. So, <laughs> so yeah, they we could definitely do to invest more into science. And the cat problem is not getting in the way at all. <laughs> I'm just putting those two words in the same sentence. I'm just saying think about it. Okay, I'm just asking for it. So, if cats really are little menaces to society, both animal and our own, what can we do? Well, cat management methods range from trapping to literally biological warfare, but I think we all know what we're all most comfortable with. It's what Bob Barker told us to do for decades, spaying and neutering. I know many of you will point out that that's very expensive to do for millions of feral cats around the world, but when you manage a population of cats correctly, it can have amazing effects. Case in point... Administrator, researcher Ada has bled out. <laughs> uh, interns in their first day jokes, oh, I'm dead and it's your fault and my family's gonna sue you. <laughs> Case in point... <laughs> I want to introduce you to a rewilding organization that uses community funding to protect biodiversity worldwide, Planet Wild. It's a global community of people who want to give back to nature by funding frontline ecosystem restoration projects through memberships. This is your chance to make a real difference for our planet from the comfort of your own home. Each month, Planet Wild selects a new project to protect animals, forests, and oceans. And they document their missions with video reports so that you can immediately see you don't feel like supporting Planet Wild anymore. Don't worry, you can cancel at any time. I've had cats for most of my life. I like cats more than most people, especially him. I know people that have outdoor cats and assist. Wait, who is? Why is he just roasting people? people? Especially him. I know people that have outdoor cats. I don't know who that is. Let me know who that is. And insist upon it. But given the research, one argument that I don't think we can disagree with anymore is that all cats should be indoor cats. You shouldn't let your cat roam freely outside. Your kitty is simply too good at being a kitty. Keeping your cat indoors reduces the feral cat population, which reduces all the you know, small animal murder and economic damage and disease spreading. I know this is going to upset some of you, but you can still give your little fur babies a taste of the outside world. Try building a catio or opening the window with a screen. That's not so hard. Remember, cats being only semi-domesticated chose to be with us. So why don't we choose to do what's best for them and the rest of the animal kingdom? Until next time. I have to go put three pints of synthetic blood into a researcher. <laughs> Again, for totally cool reasons. It's okay, family friendly. <laughs> now exiting the facility. Thanks again to Planet Wild for sponsoring today's video. Thanks again to our new researcher, Adef. Welcome him to the facility down in the comments. And thank you so much to the very nerdy professors here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this very video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white cat-proof lab coat, if you want videos early, if you want access to the private Discord, if you want private live streams with me once a month, you can go to the link on ARIA right now and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name in every single video, no matter where we are. And as you can see, there's already hundreds and hundreds. How am I ever gonna pass that? I know we said this in the last cat video as well, but something that you may not think about, I know I didn't think about when I first got cats, when I was just a, a wee lad, was that decline is an immoral kind of barbaric practice. I thought... It, absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. Do not declaw your pets. Do not do it. I hate hearing about that. Do not do it. That you're just clipping the cat's nails or pulling it from the nail bed. But cat's nails grow from their bone. They don't grow from the nail bed like yours do. You can imagine your nails coming off. That's not what happens with cats. They have to cut off the first digit. It's considered a major surgery and amputation to declaw your cat. It's like giving you nubs on all of your fingers. If you care about their well-being, no more declawing. 
No Two. more. You know, keep that finger right there. Like, no more. I agree with that. No more. <laughs> oh, man. Great video, though. And, yeah, I agree with all of this. Um, will people start keeping their cats indoors all the time? Probably not. Especially people who are already used to letting their cats out, letting them roam free. Um, but, yeah, everything in this, um, from what I've seen, is correct. Because cats, you know, you see videos all the time. I've seen it. And we're, you know, happen in real time and cats bringing home their kills and stuff because they think they're bringing home, they think they're contributing to the home by bringing home food for other people to eat because that's just how their cat brains are working. You know, you're feeding them, now they try to make an attempt to feed you. They're trying to be a part of the family in that sense. That's, that's what we believe. And it makes sense if you think about it. But um, yeah, just keep them inside if you can um if you have a way of giving them a um, an outside space that's contained that's great you know it's hard to be like oh just put them in your backyard because you know they're cats they can easily get out the backyard <laughs> with no problem if you give them a space where they can roam you know the uh, fenced in space they can roam and not really get caught up in anything you know that would be great for them but otherwise try your best to keep your cats indoors don't let them out um, but that also comes down to just being a responsible pet owner. Again, me, I don't have a pet because I'm a responsible pet owner and I know that I'm not in a position to really take care of a pet properly right now. If I get there, I'm definitely going to get me a cat. It's been a long time since I've had a cat. But in any case, until then, um, yeah, just be responsible with your cats. Take care of them, you know. But that's it for this one. So let me know what y'all thought about this video. And let me know what you'd like to see me react to next, as always. All right, y'all, like this video, share this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. We're trying to get the numbers up on here, trying to get us into monetization, just like with the main music reaction channel. All right, so be sure to do that, and I will see you guys on the next one. So till next time, till next time.